Hello, welcome back. Right, it's Good Friday, Easter weekend, so let's talk about beer, shall we? <laughs> Weatherspoon boss Tim Martin joked that there are robots pulling pints in his pubs as he was quizzed about artificial intelligence recently. So, Dawn, would you mind a robot serving you a pint in a pub? Uh, what now, at this precise moment in time, it's a little bit early, but seeing as you're asking, uh, yes, I wouldn't mind at all, to be honest with you. However, I don't want to do bar people out of jobs either. And that is the problem here. Uh, joining us now is lawyer and artificial intelligence enthusiast, hey. Andrew Eborn, enthusiast. Um, Andrew, I, you, we've had this conversation a million times. We have. AI terrifies the life out of me, especially seeing as many of the jobs that are going to be lost to AI are disproportionately women's jobs. Um, absolutely. And I always say it's our greatest human achievement, but also potentially our biggest existential threat. And what you do, as you know, I talk around the world as a futurist advising companies about what's happening in technology and these seismic advances, advances there are so that people are prepared. But if you remember the jobs they had 40 years ago, about 60 percent of those are no, uh, are no longer in effect, but they've been replaced by other jobs, and that's what's going to happen. Uh, he was brilliant in his, his thing. He was talking about, actually about the coffee machine. And we have one here at GB News. You don't have a coffee maker doing that sort of stuff. You have a little wonderful machine. You press the button, it makes your coffee for you. It never works. Well, we, we, we had a fantastic coffee. It's one of the best coffee in broadcasting. I love it. Um, but what's going to happen? Every single job in the world will be affected by artificial intelligence. It's been around since the 50s and that sort of stuff. So if you're not aware of what it can achieve, uh, you're going to miss out. But as you said, I don't think this is just going to be an exodus, an exodus of jobs and that's it. Because when the internet came round, everyone was saying the same thing. Oh my God, we're going to be out of our jobs that, you know, yeah. robots and the internet is going to take everything over. As you've alluded to, it just creates opportunities for Absolutely. new jobs. Because we're going to be doing so many things that we can't even think of or envision right now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Six percent of the jobs we have today weren't around 40 years ago. And you're going to see seismic changes in that sort of thing. The great thing about AI is that we're getting wonderful changes in things like medicine. We're finding cures for disease and so on and so forth. In terms of jobs, it's also enhancing things. You have, uh, like, new forms of entertainment. You've got the ABBA. ABBAverse is happening at the moment on that sort of side as well. Frankly, I find that weird. The, 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 the thing is, with AI, I get, right, artificial intelligence is being invented by us. But yes. now we've invented AI that invents other AI. Yes. So we have no idea what the bots are doing talking to one another. Well, and that's the scary thing. We Possibly. do need... You, you might remember um, that we had a, the first World Safety Summit right here in the UK at Bletchley Park last year. And they all came in, Elon Musk, and I'm a musketeer, support everything he does. Well, most of the things he does. Uh, you work on that sort of premise. Uh, the reality is that if we understand what it can do, then you make sure you have safeguards in place as well. And that's the reality. So all to, what it's going to do, lots of jobs, the boring, repetitive jobs, the manual jobs, the processing of huge amounts of data. It's much better with AI and it's going to make life much more efficient. Rich and that's the thing to look at. Rishi Sunak has been engineering the UK to become a world leader in AI innovation. Are we there? Are we a world oh, leader? Where does the UK sit? We totally punch above our weight. Really? We should absolutely... I campaigned to put the AI into Britain and see what I did there. Uh, you, you, work, you work on that sort of premise. So we are. We have some of the best brains in the world. We have some of the most creative things. The way to look at AI, and Rishi alluded to it uh, during the safety summit, is as a co-pilot. If you understand what it can do, then it's brilliant. I do this thing, as Dawn knows, called fake or fact, which we look at all the time. And if you combine AI, which was the word of the year last year, Colin's word of the year, with fake news, uh, which was 2017, the world is a polluted information age. What you need to do is to question everything. What, what do you reckon about getting AI robots to patrol the English Channel and stop the smoke? Yeah, they, they could do it. Like and, and actually, you're working on the sort of base. They could absolutely do that. And also, they can work out the likelihood of certain things happening. And in the same way, they can predict criminality. They can predict certain things as well. So all of that is happening behind the scenes. They don't talk as much about it, but it is happening. But we don't have that. Well, we, oh, I know we had the uh, conference of Bletchley Park, but we don't have security guards in place on this yet. Nowhere in the world does, do they? That's the problem. Well, they have these little guard dogs. I mean, you might have seen them. I, I, I go along to these lots of conferences, speak at these conferences around the world, and there are. There are robotic dogs that can sniff people out uh, and so on and so forth. There, there are effectively in place lots of these sort of systems. But it's not just the physical things. Obviously, they're working on uh, the cybercrime as well, working on the basis that you can predict these things by analysing wording and people's p and patterns of behaviour. I love your enthusiasm for it. I can see and feel your passion as you're speaking and it's so rare when you meet people um, and they're talking about a subject they're meant to be an expert at but you Andrew I can feel I can, it coming you're, 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 you're a convert now Ben <laughs> you no know he's not actually a bot I am a bot I am a bot you know, <laughs> that enthusiasm isn't coming from a pre-programmed bot designed to sell AI to you it, it certainly is and I'm well spotted <laughs> it looks good well, I, I, it is a reality I just hope they don't uh, replace TV presenters that's all I'll say
That's Sorry. it. Malfunction, malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> That's it from Britain's newsroom. I am back tonight. I'm going to plug myself now. I'm covering Mark Dolan's show, 8 to 9 p.m. Lots of fun coming up. Um, I'm going to have a special... Um, something to say about Christianity and Easter. And Dawn, you are... I'm going to be identifying as the lovely Michelle Dewberry tonight as well. What so a it's treat. Double Ben and Dawn today. Sorry about that, and we're not bots either. <laughs> uh, as you can probably tell. Uh, Andrew, thank you very I'd much. I'd love to see you. Today. Uh, right, Britain's newsroom is up next. Next, um, a good afternoon, Breton, with Patrick and Emily.